Okay, let's get started. Uh, three o'clock sharp. Uh, we try to stay prompt as possible because we don't know how long technology is going to stay up awake with us. Uh, keep us happy not to play any funny games. Uh, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Uh, we're, I'm grateful for another opportunity to talk about a subject that is really intriguing, different. Uh, a subject that we grew up with from day one, from the time we, even bore, we were born. Uh, competition, competitiveness. We keep hearing about it. We're going to be a competitive world. We're going to be a competitive at everything that we do. Today's discussion is debating how effective that term has it been completely take, uh, in context or has it been taken out of context? And what are the consequences of both angles? So I am Abed Baidus, the uh, group chairman and CEO of Identity Branding Forum. And I'm glad I have this pleasure and the honor to be with you talking to you this afternoon. Uh, and we're trying to keep this on a weekly basis. And thank you for following us and encouraging others to join us as well. Thank you. We appreciate this opportunity. Let's get started. Hopefully you all can see and hear me well with this conversation. So, okay, and please make sure that you refresh your page if you do not uh, hear or stop seeing the picture clearly uh, as we get started and we go along. Anytime, any questions that you may have, please place it in the questions and answers. And at the end, I'll be more than happy to uh, share it with you. Uh, it might be awkward to, to put ugly and competitive together in the same statements, in the same line, but do they fit together? I don't know. Let's, we're going to be discussing this as we, uh, as we go on into this conversation. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is introduce you guys to who we are. Identity Branding Forum, we've been for over 25 year, 24 years. We're into the 25th year. Uh, building, creating amazing stuff. We build sustainable, disruptive brands. We help people become the best at what they are. And uh, our focus basically is how to make people feel unique, become unique, create uniqueness, uh, if, uh, change their mindset. That's what we do. Check our website, identitybrandingforum.net, and you'll also have a lot of links available to you at the handouts for later uh, in that conversation. Now, what I'd like to do is when we talk about the, today we're gonna to be talking about the pros and cons of competitiveness. It's a great thing to be, to think competitive. It's a great thing to, uh, to, to, to look at being the best. What is critical here is accepting the consequences, accepting failure. Not too many of us do that. And, and we are seeing examples of, of this around us throughout our lifetime, through work, at work, at school, at home. So we, we, we are, losing is tough consequences. And we're going to see life examples of what happened to us uh, as recently around the world of events that's taking place. So competitiveness, a, a competitive personality is great things to have as long as we know it's okay if I failed. It's okay if I lose. Nothing wrong with that. It's part of life. And it doesn't change who we are and being the best at what we are. It starts at home. You see, we grew up, mom and dad telling us that I want you to be the best. Who is going to be the first to get the car keys? Who is going to be first to sit on the dinner table? Who is going to be the first to go to school, who's to wake up in the morning. So we started racing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna beat you. Who's gonna be the first to sit in the car and put their seat belts? I got you first, mom, I got it first. That's where it started. And that being first, we're gonna always have second. 
The second in, in, in line is basically is that person that is not being noticed. It is not being felt. So we, we, we focus on this person and who feels being supported. And this second person is being neglected or feeling the neglect at home. So that's where the whole thing starts. Carry on with this conversation, take it to school. When we went to school, we had the same issue uh, because we had the issue of grading. We have to have exams to sit for. We have to be first. Who's going to win? Who's going to be the top in the class? The same thing we run at businesses. When we have the issue of the the uh, the, the month, the employee of the month award. Okay, so that creates yes encouragement to the employee that is being at the top, but it also creates resentment for the employees that cannot compete for different reasons. Being second, not necessarily being not being as good as the other person. It is just circumstances. Maybe that person is being in the place in the wrong place, being provided the wrong conditions, the wrong tools uh, that will help. How do we really frame up that everybody is being looked at, not being neglected, being supported? And this is a discussion that we really need to keep in mind carefully as we frame it. So there is a competition. It has three layers the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I'm sure you guys have seen this movie. Okay, I'm gonna start with the ugly of this conversation, okay? Why this is, because this is what actually is more spread, widely spread than anything else there is in the world today. We're seeing more of the ugly competitions, of the ugly competitors, of the ugly um, competitive attitude that is really taking us away from the, what the what competition or competitive spirit is all about. You remember this. This is destructive ugly. This guy has grown up that he, he shouldn't be, uh, he would look lo weak if he lose. So lo a loss is something out of his textbook, out of his dictionary, out of his vocabulary. He wouldn't accept it. So he would give, he, he would, uh, De de demolish everything democracy in the United States is about to create to be himself that his ego that I cannot be the person to appear that I have lost who, who am I who, who well, who's gonna say that who can dare to say I lost that's a destructive attitude because that was in his upbringing at home and we have another thing that we really need to look at the bad competition now we talk we've seen the ugly now let's talk about the bad Competition, awards at work, created corruption, okay? Not everybody is able to do these things as everybody else is doing, as uh, excelling people are doing. So when we started the award, the bonuses and the likes for the top performers, we create, we allowed corruption to, flow, to, to come in. So now we are focusing on, uh, on uh, uh, ex ex excelling performing individuals and ignoring the rest of the team, ignoring the rest of the family. So this is bad. This is bad. This is what we call a bad competition. We created corruption at work at different levels. You remember this? This is me cheating in school. Why? Because we had gradings. But if I didn't, if, if I didn't study as much as hard as, as, as somebody else is studying, I'm going to fail. And if I failed, I'm going to appear to be the second, third or last in, in the class. So to me, and to many other people, how many of you guys been there? Okay, we all been there one way or the other, whether we admit it or not, but we've been there. We've been there because we didn't, we didn't, we felt bad to be in second or third or fourth or even lose. Loss wasn't something that is acceptable on a social level. This is how we grew up. We didn't grow up in order to be the best at, uh, uh, to be, uh, losing is okay. No, we had to, so we had to improvise stuff to really think about, that's me again, cheating, okay? Because I couldn't, like, because my sister used to play very well, I had to cheat. I had to look at her, pick his, her, her cards or the next person's cards because I didn't, it, it wasn't there, I wasn't there for the fun of it. I was there because I had to win. I had to show that I won. This is part of our attitude. This is part of how we really start looking at competing at a game level, at job, 
at schools, at home. So even in our marriages today in societies, this we have been looked at be competition between a man and a woman at home, between a man and a woman at job. So we always thinking of competing, proving we are better. Okay, and that is the me, 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 me. Okay, the the the, the story. The, the individuals that is being the best in the team focus on that every, he, he, nobody sees anything except him, that person. And this is a true story. You all know Ronaldo, okay? So Ronaldo was in one side of the game and the whole team was in the other. So that the morale of the team started going down with the morale of the, Ronaldo's going up. That's why, uh, Real Madrid had to get rid of him because he was really causing the team to lose while he was winning. So they had, it, it was all about Ronaldo. Uh, Real Madrid was all about Ronaldo. The whole media campaign associated with Real Madrid is all about Ronaldo. The winning of Real Madrid was about Ronaldo. So they had to get rid of him. So the rest of the team can play and outperform other teams as a team. So this is part of why we say it, the, the, we had to create a balance with when we talk about it. This is a good. I need you to think about when you want to compete, not to compete how to replace all of these blocks, but how to fit in within that block. To keep those blocks up standing. Okay? If you move one, the whole thing will collapse, right? So what we really need to start thinking, creating that spirit, the right competitive attitude, is how to start thinking of being the, the block that is going to hold everything up together. That's going to hold the whole family together. That's going to hold the whole team at work together. That is going to hold the whole team on sports together. That is going to hold the whole team in class together. Anything. So that is the attitude or the mindset change that we really need to start thinking to create that attitude. So what we really need to learn or change the way we think is not to compete against others, but to compete against ourselves. Because when, to yourself, because that when we start thinking, how can I make myself as best as I can to fly up with the rest? Not to be to fly above the rest, but with the rest. Keep the rest together. That is the, the that is the desirable attitude. What that, that requires endearment, love, care, empathy for others in how to really start making things look better for everybody, not just for yourself, because you don't, you, you, you're, gonna, you're not gonna rise when you start, when you're only focusing on yourself. You're gonna rise when that block, if you remember that wall stands up high. So how do you really start looking at becoming a beautiful model to others, an icon? Not by beating everybody, but by working with everybody, by, looking at everybody being the best with, with, with you together, not being above of them. So we really need to start differentiating between contracts, contrast and context. Contrast, that means we are different. We really need to replace that word with context. How do we really fit in, in the whole scheme of success? Not being different. So take contrast out of your vocabulary replace it with context. And this is what I mean, okay? How to be first at making others be happy. One way to look at it. How to be the first at helping competition to grow. This is a great attitude because when the competition grows, the market demand grows. What's happening today is we, to compete, we have to, we have to get rid of the competition. So when we do, the market diminishes. Why? Because now I'm in control of the prices to increase, but competition it creates good environment, healthy for product improvements and the likes for the market to be accepting us. So look at being the first to helping competition to grow because this is good for your image as a business or wherever you are. How to be the first at teaching others to be their best. Okay. Now what you really need to do is when you look at everybody being the best, this is your passion. This is becomes your joy. This has become everything about you. That's how everybody is going to be seeing you, desiring you. Now you're becoming the desirable person that would fit in anywhere.
because your mindset is with everybody, not with just yourself. And that's what we really need to care about. That is what we really need to start nurturing out. This is what we really need to be the beautiful pictures to start. Yes, develop resilience and perseverance to carry on, be the top performer, but at the same time, to be empathetic, how to help others, to encourage others, make sure you lift them up because without them, the whole wall will collapse. There is no wall. If everybody else is out and except your block, you're only one person, you're one piece. So if the whole team collapse, if your whole environment, wherever you are collapses, what is left there for you? Nothing. You will be only you and nobody else to make that wall stands. So your wall will collapse. This is a beautiful picture. Number one, lost. Number three, one. Number three, one with attitude, the right attitude, because it wasn't to him about winning and losing. Being there in itself, making it number three is a win. That is the attitude that we really need to care about. While number one, lost and looking, at, imagining himself as a lost person. This is a perception that we really need to start focusing, creating the right stuff, the right attitude. Start at, start at home, teach your kids, it's okay to be second, it's okay to be third, it's okay to lose. What matters is how to be there, how to make it there, just in itself is a win. To me, I won today because I am there, I'm here to, with you. Nothing distracted me or kept me away from you. No matter how poorly or great I do, I already made it, I already made my day. I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm sharing my thoughts, my feelings, my empathy, because I really cared how to really the world to change it, to be more empathetic, more world of endearment. How do we really start connecting together? Because what is good competition is how to help others to grow. Remember this, encourage the bad to stop and push the ugly to empathy by creating events, by creating activities that really, without them knowing it, they are already pulled into it. We can only change the bad to good or the ugly to good by more goodness being poured in. Imagine how could that be, how that could start, and it could. Okay, you need to learn to give for you to grow. Simple. That's a simple formula, okay? You couldn't grow without learning giving. You couldn't grow that tree without having to take care of it. Think of everything around you, your, your brothers, your sisters, your, 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 your schoolmates, your classmates, in college, at work. Uh, whatever you do in your life, in societies, in the communities, it, it, you, you're, it, you got to nurture that seed for you to look beautiful. That is what it matters. That's how you become a game changer. That's how you become all that everybody wants to be with because you can help them be their best. You can help them grow. Don't just focus on yourself. Be the lone, the, the, the lone raider, the person, the mystery hero that helps everybody, keeps everybody protected, guarded, taken care of. You are the grandfather of everything that you nurture today. Remember this, keep it in your mind, whether you are at a school level, business, college, business, wherever you are, you are the grandfather of whatever you nurture today because you're gonna see what you nurture, what you, what you harvest tomorrow is, 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 what's gonna, is based on what you see today. Make it beautiful. You're gonna see a whole bunch of the world growing around you. So when you start when you start seeding goodness, when you start feeling goodness, when you start feeding goodness, everything around you will grow. That is how this is how you'll grow. This is how you become a multiplier of activities, a multiplier of events that you create in your life. All of these people now becomes you. This is becomes how, this is how far how big your wall is going to grow. This is what's going to make you, you. So to, to help to do that, we created what we call Talents of Endearment Career Labs. In order to allow people 
to create passion for the whole world to grow, not just one person or one individual. We show people how to win people's heart because that's, it is, this is what the, the good competition is all about. How to really shape the future when you start connecting the dots, when you start connecting everybody together. Now you've got the whole ecosystem that is going to help you go as fast, as high, and as loud as you would like to be. And this is the only way you're going to be able to become a game changer. This is the only way by looking at people, helping them fulfill their aspirations. And this is how you're going to win the whole universe. Love. Care. Not, so now everybody is going to be looking at you as the main block that needs to stay in that whole wall to stay, to stay up standing. This is what we really need to care to show. Create a purpose. That wall now is there for a purpose. You are there for a purpose. Everybody starts looking at you for that purpose. This is what we help people through that the, the Talents of Endearment Career Labs. It is not about what I teach you. It is what we help you learn to discover about yourself. This is critical. This is what will help you become who you are. This is what will, be, will help you to see the best that you want to be. And this is what's going to help you get connected with st other students, with businesses, entrepreneurs, collaborate, think big, dream big, and build big. No limitations to what you can do when you start engaging the whole society with you. And this is the beauty of this whole program. This is why I'm excited talking to you about it. Because I'm, I'm passionate. And when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to my future. I am that one piece and, and one, I am that one block in that wall that I want to see you helping me stand tall. But I couldn't stand tall until you stand tall. I cannot be stand big until you stand big. I cannot stand powerful, strong, until you stand powerful and strong. We're starting a career uh, session on the 11th of March coming up. And we're sponsoring the first three days of this whole program for free to try it, for everybody to try it. And we invite you, encourage you actually, actually push you to share this message with others. Share this recording with others in order to, feel, to, to learn to discover what you can do. And if you like it, you can continue. With, uh, and if you didn't like it, you can stop that obligation. Check the details of this program. We also created what we call a smart internship. That we start helping students in college to create opportunities by connecting to others and help and collaborating with others to grow. And this is run all over the world, worldwide. And we have over 12 universities that are starting this program with us in UAE, India, and Croatia so far. And, and, uh, and, and hopefully in Jordan very soon. So what we really need to start focusing in terms of how do we really change the world and thinking together for each other. This is the right competition. This is what really it should be like, not what it should be. This is what it should be about. It is not about me. It's about what we can do for each other, for me to be a part of each other. Now we can take questions. Stop sharing. Now I'm ready for your questions. Okay, I see, uh, can students join in? Yes, of course, they can join in anytime until March the 11th, when we start with this program, if that's what you are asking about. I see a question of uh, Tatiana means, are, you are against evaluation. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm against peer-to-peer -peer evaluation, but I'm, I'm for individual evaluation. Okay, because what I really like to see is not people being pressured. You see, the more evaluation, the more testing, the more monitoring, the more supervision we have, the less creative environment we, we allow people, the less innovation, innovation we become. So we, when we start like, looking, evaluating students, now we're going back to the same issue. I'm pressured. I'm going to be evaluated. I'm going to be judged. Okay, Evaluation means judgment because this is how we program. So what I like to see is the, uh, make it free, all right? The evaluation, the reward for that person, what you really can do 
is uh, second place, not comfort with attitude. There are two different things implementing each other. Of course, evaluation make it a group evaluation. Okay, instead of individual evaluation in schools, we in talents of engineering we have two types of a program in the career labs that we do, and this is how we started growing in, with universities and schools. Is you have individual projects and you have teams projects, groups projects. So the groups now started working together and look how to validate their idea in society, okay? To see if it's viable socially, viable economically, skillfully, and, uh, and promote it to the rest of the world. Try to convince the world that you are the right person. If not, then this is the right evaluation. Put it to test in, rea in real, in the ground, in, to create a ground reality evaluation. This becomes exciting. Because now I'm not looking at uh, being judged by this by a teacher. Okay, one person evaluation is wrong. I couldn't evaluate you. I am not. What, whatever knowledge I have today is invalid tomorrow. Okay, and in in schools, for example, whatever knowledge the instructor has is by the time you wake up in the morning, it's old news. We have more stuff coming up by the second with this exponential technological transformation. We are in the speed, when it's in the speed light it knowledge basis. Students today needs to be set free. People at jobs needs to be set free. What we really need to do is allow everybody to think crazy for a reason. I love being crazy. I love to think crazy because crazy is what, make, what brings the best out of society. 2002, when we started with e-learning, universities used to say, to tell us we are crazy to think that students would substitute college life for e-learning, for educate, to sit behind computers and technology. What was crazy then today is a reality, being pushed to that reality. What we really need to do is to stop put, putting up barriers, but yet allow people to think themselves, to be themselves. Any other questions? All right, I would like to start a, a poll here. How, how old were you when you had your best competitive experience? Please share. I'm sure all of you can can participate. Thank you, Abdul Nasser. Thank you, Tatiana. Who else? 16, nice. Who else? 31. Let me show results to everybody. Come on, guys. <clears throat> wow, 26, okay. I was 23 when I had my first experience. Who else wants to participate? Don't be shy about it. This is this this is real fun. If we if we think about it, this is really meaningful, relevant to everything that we do. Okay, that's it. All right, let's go to the next one. When was your latest worst competitive experience? I'm going to share the results with everybody so we all enjoy it. Come on, help me. Come on. I'm waiting. We're waiting. 41. Okay. Come on. Who else? Who has the courage to tell us? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to lose. It's okay to have a bad exper competitive experience. Share it. I had my worst competitive experience when we went to the swimming pool last week to compete with kids in the swimming pool. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right. What else? Thank you, Dr. Latha. Anybody else, Anybody wants to share? Only two? Out of the whole bunch? Come on. 
Last month, great. Who else? Okay. Most of you are feeling embarrassed to answer this question. That's okay. Now, what are you best at? One word or two. Sports, swimming, playing football, soccer, cooking, eating, what? What are you best at? Karting, nice. Football, listening to what? Music, uh, play football, nice. Maybe you can have a team one day. Interacting with the students, wonderful. Who else? Come on guys, help me here a little bit. We're having fun this afternoon. Cooking, ah, I love cooking whenever I get a chance to. Who else? That's it. <laughs> it's a good exercise. It's a good, it, it, it's good eating. <laughs> God bless. It's, you see, it, the whole thing is about really enjoying it. It is not Take the, we, we enjoy the little things in life. I'm gonna share with you a story of mine that uh, when I was in elementary school, we used to have a gang of bad kids in school. So the good guys, we, we decided, they decided to have the good guys, the good kids gang, okay? This was, uh, I was about uh, third grade. You can, you can imagine how little I, are, I was. Don't ask how old I am because you probably guess it if I said. But now I, what happens? And they elected me to be the boss of this gang, the leader of this gang, the good guys gang. So we started in that day and we, 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 we announced the message, teachers com commending us because now we're starting doing good things in the school. And the second day comes, we, Leaving school at two o'clock in the afternoon. This was in Kuwait, by the way. Leaving school at two o'clock at uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. Leaving the, uh, leaving school with my friends. Here are the, the the bad boys gang with their leader waiting at the door. And <laughs> the minute we, we we walked out of the school door, my team. The minute they saw the bad guys with their muscular leader, and uh, if you had a bad connection, refresh your page. And the, they, they ran away, they disappeared. I was there alone and I didn't know what is gonna happen. Next thing I know, rocks being thrown and I'm being chased, running home. Didn't wait for my, for my ride to get home. Until I, when I got home, I was all dusty, dirty, sweating like hell. Little kid. Mom is wondering what happened. I says, no, no, I just decided to take a run home. It took luck in the hot summer day in Kuwait. Next day, I gave up. Okay. So what we really need to start focusing, I didn't give up. I gave up on being a, lead, a, a leader of a team that quit on me. But I didn't give up help with the desires to help people. This is what we really need to start thinking about. It is about us together for each other. Keep that as a message, spread the word, share the information, look at the information in the handouts, share it with your colleagues, with the people. This is for not only for students, but it's also for businesses, professionals to participate because what we do during those sessions is we bring them together to start collaborating, understanding what really goes on in society and how to really boost the morale, encourage people, especially in the, during the time of the pandemic with everything that is going down. Uh, okay, that's a good question. How to attract employees 
in competition without giving them bad idea and still encourage them or how to make them interact with each other and how to encourage colleagues uh, by creating an events, creating activities that really push them together and you, the boss, being a part of it, okay? And you cannot encourage everybody to, to, to do well and you are, you are being seen different separately. So you need to set examples. We need to, activities, it varies from environment to environment, but they create a, for example, we are in, look at, for example, the pandemic today. Employees are at home, okay, went home, businesses went at home. And uh, think of the activities, let's, let's disco discover what everybody's aspiration. What is it that they hate the most they would like to change? Think of that, gather this data. Okay, and then start looking at different ideas, how to fix it. But make sure everybody is part of it. When everybody is participating, everybody is giving a chance to, to, to bring data, to bring, now I've, got, I've, I've checked with everybody in my family, my neighborhood, make it as large as possible. Because now you're creating a, ra a random data of ground reality, realities, of opportunities ex that exist around you now. Now your employees are part of it. Their families are part of it. When they are a part of it, their families are part of it, they're gonna feel proud of what they're gonna give you back. And when they are a part of really sharing the ideas, how to put them together, work on them together, they will be proud of the outcome. They're gonna be proud of that relationship with your company or your school, whatever you are. Their families is gonna be very proud of that outcome because now they are involved. They are engaged. So what you really need to do is not just to create an activity, but an engaging activity that multiple, multiplies by far to, to affect or to touch everybody that matters to your people, to your employees. But make sure that you are in the middle of it. Make sure you are an example of it. Uh, join our sessions for the career labs that's coming up. Then you will discover because <laughs> We will be able to run a uh, run number of examples that uh, that would make it work. Uh, it, it, all environments are different. Uh, for example, competition of cooking, compete. For example, we had uh, in, in one of our offices, we used to have weekly competition. Who is going to bring mom's cooking to the office? Okay. So what everybody used to enjoy going home and uh, because uh, they want to bring mom's cooking. They'll go home, mom's is really excited. Now she's going to cook for the whole office, 28 people. And what happens when they come in, this, th these people coming in, sharing the different foods. Now we are, everybody in that office, 28 people sitting and eating together, complimenting each other, commenting on each other. Laughing and he's just joking. Mom, this kid is going, this employee is excited, going home, telling mom, what a great job, how much they like the food, how much they love the food. They want you to cook again, okay? So it becomes a passion for everybody to be there, to contribute. We connected work, job with home. You really need to focus on that. You need to think of those activities, not just a birthday. You need to, th to connect, to create, to think of activities that matters the most to, to your employees, that matters the most to the people that you care about the most. Don't just focus on one person. Focus on the groups of people. Remember that multiplier? When you connect to that multiplier, that, be that multiplier becomes your the momentum behind everything that you do. Join us at the Career Labs, whether you are a professional or a student. Encourage your, your colleagues, your peers. The first three days is, is uh, sponsored by us for free to try it. And if you like it, you can continue with the 33 days. And what you will get, you will get a lifetime support. So you're never alone in your career. With a platform with, for five years in order to build what you really wanna uh, uh, build. Thank you, Tatiana. I really enjoyed this concession. Unless we have any other questions, I salute you for joining me today. I really enjoyed this and I love you guys. For that, please stay safe, stay positive, stay productive. And remember, together for each other. God bless. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.